What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's time for another recap of what went down on this week's episode of Kale's Coffee Convos Podcast. It was quite juicy, you guys. I definitely do recommend. Again, I always listen to these things on like 1.5 to two times the speed just to get through it, but I recommend it. It was quite good. The episode kicked off with Kale talking about how someone tried to break into the house that she just listed up for sale. And um, unfortunately, she doesn't really expound on it. I would have wanted to know a little bit more about the process of what she's got to do now. Was there any damage? Do they think that this person is like a deranged fan of the show or something? Because her address and stuff was leaked online when it was announced that she was listing up the house. I also wanted to know how this affects her and her choices as, you know, a reality star, someone who makes like pages for her kids and like posts about their days on like a regular basis. Now knowing that, listen, not everyone who watches me is a passive viewer. Some people literally might want to harm me. Some people might want to like, encounter me in person like you know against my wishes like I really I thought that that could have been a very good conversation but unfortunately her co-host then changed the subject to sneezing while driving and whether or not you would then be responsible for a car crash I'm sorry Lindsay if you're watching this but I rolled my eyes so hard Kale then also talks about a personal health issue that she's been going through lately and she's going to be seeking medical advice on um, it's a little bit TMI for me to want to share my thoughts on like publicly on this channel so it is going to be in my channel members section make sure to hit that join button if you want to join that conversation and then moving forward Kale and Lindsay then talk about whether or not money can buy you happiness and Kale says that she learned after buying a 7,000 square foot home to try and buy Chris's love that money doesn't buy happiness and that you shouldn't try to buy your way into fitting people into your life and she says that the more money she made the weirder she got which quite tickled me and by the way she didn't directly say like to buy Chris's love or to try and buy someone into your house but that is the gist of what it is that she meant like when she was kind of like um, beating them around the bush on why she bought that home and why she ultimately wasn't happy with that decision we've already seen her basically admit as much on Teen Mom 2 where she said listen I bought this house thinking that it would bring Chris around more, but unfortunately it didn't. And so now I've got to go back to Dover. And speaking of Chris, Kale wants everyone to know that there is a court issued custody order between the two of them that allows them to get an overnight supervised visitation with their son Lux on Christmas Eve, heading into Christmas day. And then he also gets to spend half of Christmas day with Creed as well from 12 until four o'clock. Things get quite interesting when a young woman around the age of 25, married to a man who's 27, writes in to complain that she feels as though she might have settled for her husband because things in their life are quite routine and they married quite young and so um, at that point in the advice that Kel gives it kind of sounds like she regretted divorcing Javi and you know she better be careful with what she says because Javi might pop up at the parking lot with a ring next time ready to propose to her all over again so when Kel was counseling this girl she said listen um, the grass is not always greener on the other side love is a choice that you need to be making and um, she says that she learned her lesson about the grass not being greener on the other side after her divorce. She's happy to have Lux and Creed that came along after the divorce and everything like that, but she also feels as though she did not exhaust all of her options in the marriage before calling it quits, and that's something that she seems to regret. She actually delves a little bit deeper into this, much to Javi's chagrin. Remember, a couple episodes back, she talked about how Javi made her swear that she would never talk about him publicly again, and then she's been breaking it ever since, you guys, every single week. But So here we are. So she actually said, listen, I actually wish that Javi and I had a trial separation before we actually went through a divorce. She says that it wasn't a proper separation that they had, like with the intention of kind of like thinking about where their heads were at, letting the dust settle and everything like that before pulling the trigger for divorce. It could just be me, but in the next sentence, it kind of sounds like she all but admits to have cheating on, cheated on Javi with Chris, but I'll let you be the judge. She actually says, listen, we had like a routine going on that I wasn't feeling anymore. There were other people out there could other people mean Chris? Because listen, the conception of Lux and that divorce was cutting it real close, y'all. And um, she says, listen, we got married young as well. These are all the things that made me feel like the grass could be greener on the other side, but I ultimately found out that it wasn't. I know it sounds like she really wants to get back together with Javi or something like that, but she lets us know, listen, no, I don't wanna be with him. I'm just letting this woman know what I would do 
if I knew then what I know now. And I think that that is very good advice, especially the trial separation. Just, you know, don't jump from married to divorce. Maybe take some time, live separately a little bit. Lindsay, who went through the situation, she went through a separation, then she filed for divorce and went back, you know, um, kind of agreed as well that like sometimes you just need to have a little bit of a break to know exactly what it is you, that you have at home. And it doesn't always mean that you want to date other people in the meantime. Sometimes you just want to have your like, I don't know, like your general space. And last but not least, she talked about Creed being born on this week's episode of Teen Mom 2. She complains that Teen Mom, like the producers, whoever it is that deals with them, they don't give them enough notice about what it is that's gonna air. So she didn't know that Creed's birth would be airing on Tuesday. So she was out at like this football game and blah, blah, blah. She found out at the last minute, rushed home to watch it, but she only managed to catch the last few minutes. Luckily for her, the birth was the last few minutes, so she did catch it and she was disappointed that that it wasn't made a bigger deal. She says, I filmed so many diary entries about how my body just instinctively knew how, what to do, but none of it made it on air. You only saw me push for like a couple of seconds, but it is what it is. That's just the way television works sometimes, unfortunately. Guys, what do you think about Kale's old home being broken into, her talking about not being able to buy love, and her potentially regretting her divorce to Javi. Make sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. If you want some conversation on the health issue that she was talking about, make sure to hit that join button down below because I will be posting a video about that right after I finish filming this one. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.